the CBS Sports Family of Networks, the highest standard in sports television, including the CBS Sports Network, Showtime Sports, CBSSports.com, and the CBS Sports Radio Network, the best in sports online, on radio, and on the air. CBS Sports, expect it here. Coming out of Daytona last March, the Geico AMA Pro Road Racing Series community was in shock. A man known for consistent wins had been blanked. Defending Superbike champion Josh Hayes. Hayes left Florida with only a handful of points, and some felt his search for a fourth consecutive title had come to a premature and ignominious end. As the season enters its second half, that story and many more have come to the fore. Cameron Bowie comes out of the last corner and he's gonna make it four in a row. We've seen a young Californian display a dominance of the sport bike division few could have imagined possible. And that was just textbook Laguna Seca. And wow, as we expected, Cameron Bobier finally at home and in the lead. We have watched as a promising candidate for the championship snatched victory from a favorite son. A host of young challengers in sport bike and superbike alike have made their presence known. And we've witnessed what must surely represent one of the worst days at the office a veteran superbiker has ever had to endure. To date, AMA Pro Racing has delivered all that it has promised and more and we are only just past halfway there These are the men who brought basic black back into fashion. The writers of the Vance and Hines Harley Davidson Racing Series. Born out of the concept of spec racing, the XR 1200s challenged the most demanding circuits of the nation with their deep throated roar, mixing it up elbow to elbow, much as their flat tracking brethren have done for over a century. And inside these walls, one will find the mother church of performance, the place one goes when one wishes to go fast. Vance and Hines, a decades-old firm that was founded on the belief that competition of any kind deserves the best parts, engineering, and development possible. Welcome to the AMA Pro Racing Pre-Race Show, presented by 1-800-Motorcycle. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Page, and along with AMA and World Superbike Champion Scott Russell and expert commentator Danielle Teal, we'll be bringing you our continuing coverage of the Geico Motorcycle AMA Pro Road Racing Series. This week, we will be covering round six of both the Sport Bike and Superbike 2013 Championship chases from Miller Motorsports Park just outside of Salt Lake City. But first, let's get down to business here in Indianapolis, where the subject at hand is known for its distinct rumble. The Vance and Hines XR 1200 series kicked off in Daytona for what many would say was the best race of the weekend. Tyler O'Hara would win this classic battle after losing here last year by just one tenth of a second. But ultimately, the story of 2013 thus far would be about the man who finished last at Daytona with electrical problems, Steve Rapp. After that Daytona disappointment, Rapp let everyone at Elkhart Lake know his mechanical woes were behind him, and he wouldn't be seeing any more of those close finishes if he had anything to do with it. Despite missing all practice and the first qualifying session, because of his commercial flying commitments, he qualified on the pole and easily won by four seconds. At Birmingham, he missed the first practice session, but then qualified second. It took him just one lap to take the lead from the defending series champion, Michael Barnes. In the end, it was another dominating win, a five and a half second margin. Mid-Ohio was a different story, thanks to a broken zipper on his leathers right before the race. While the rest of the field was on their warm-up lap, he was changing into borrowed leathers. Starting on cold tires, it took him five laps to take the lead. 
From then on, it was side by side in a battle with Travis Wyman. Rap triumphed in his third consecutive win by just a tenth of a second. With four rounds remaining, Rap has an impressive lead in the points over the defending champion Barnes, especially considering he came up empty in Daytona. This place, of course, is filled with all manner of parts designed to make motorcycles perform at their best. Now, out in California, Scott is with someone who can help us understand how super gets infused into super bike. Well, thank you, Paul. At the last round, I explained how to ride one of these motorcycles, but for this one, I want to go to the expert, Jim Roach, and tell us a little bit about the electronics on the motorcycle. Thanks, Scott. What we use at Yamaha is a Magneti Morelli system. You can see we have the dash for the rider to view and an ECU. This operates all of the electronics on the motorcycle. One of the items that we use is the brake pressure so we can see how hard the rider is braking. Further down here, we measure the suspension travel and see where the suspension is in the, on the track. Even further down here, we have the wheel speed sensor. What the wheel speed sensor on the front wheel does is it measures how fast it's rotating. On the back of the bike, on the back wheel, we have a rear wheel speed sensor. When, these, when the speed of the rear wheel is spinning faster than the front wheel, what we need is traction control. We limit the engine way it's running and slow the bike down so that the speeds can match and the rear doesn't spin. Well, Jim, thanks a lot for explaining that. For the viewers at home, I think that's great. Back to you, Paul. The technology on these bikes is fascinating and ever-changing. And here at Vance and Hines, the quest to go faster and quicker continues every day as they continue to develop bikes for both the drag strip and the road course. A bit of history for you. 22 years ago, Vance and Hines won the 1991 AMA Pro Superbike title with Thomas Stevens riding against our Scott Russell. Perhaps the greatest day for Vance and Hines in road racing was in 1999, when riders Anthony Gobert and Ben Bostrom each won two legs of the World Superbike event at Mazda Raceway at Laguna Seca. Coming up, the Russell tutorial on speed continues. We'll look at where the superbike season is right now, and Danielle Teal will give us a look at an independent superbike operation. AMA Pro Racing Preview Show on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by Yamaha. Yamaha is the first name in motorsports. And by GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Visit GEICO.com for a free rate quote. The story out of the gate for 2013 was, would Josh Hayes become the first rider in history to win four consecutive AMA Pro Superbike titles? By the time the checkered flag had flown on the second Superbike race at Daytona, Hayes was 48 points down in the championship hunt. A blown engine and clutch problems the culprits. But three-time champion used the next three months to recommit himself, not only to winning the fourth title, but making life miserable for his competitors. No, this was the kick in the pants that you need sometimes, I think, and the motivation's back, and I want to take my riding to another level if I can, and uh, it has nothing to do with anybody else that's on the racetrack. It's about Josh Hayes fulfilling what Josh Hayes knows he's capable of doing, so uh, no lack of motivation, that's for sure. The Yamaha Ace wasted no time at Road America. Martin Cardenas took the lead for about a half a mile in race one before Hayes forcefully moved his way to the front. As they touch, going into three. They did actually touch, and that also gave Hayden and a few others. I think Heron got through there as well, but boy, what that was close. By the end of the weekend, he had swept both races, his fifth consecutive win at the track, a record for the class. More importantly, he had closed the point deficit to 34 points. The clock was Hayes' biggest threat at Birmingham. He was called for jumping the start in race one, which resulted in a five-second penalty on the final results. Hayes had the field covered at the end by two tenths over that penalty. Another race win. Race two saw Roger Hayden on a brilliant ride, challenging in the closing laps, but Hayes relentlessly held on to another precious win. Incredibly, he was now second in the points, just 10 points behind the leader Cardenas. The pressure was on to stop Hayes' march to the points lead. His Yamaha teammate, Josh Heron, put up a bold fight at Mid-Ohio, but Hayes' determination was unequaled. 
His fifth consecutive win of the season gave him a one-point lead in the standings. It appeared nobody could beat Hayes except Hayes himself, and that's what happened in race two. Hayes jumped the start again, another five-second penalty. He would be the first to cross the line, but only 4.8 seconds ahead of the Yamaha teammate, Josh Heron. Heron graciously took the win while Hayes kept the points lead by just four points. The superbike race at Laguna Seca was over before lap one was complete. Hayes jumped out in front, ran flawlessly, winning his 39th career superbike race. The points lead was now growing, and the Daytona misfortunes a distant memory. The point lead for Hayes now stands at 11 with five races remaining. We'll see this weekend if the momentum continues. He won the Utah AMA Superbike race last year by over seven seconds. This double header will tell us a lot about Josh Hayes and the rest of the Superbike contenders in short notice. Now you can be assured that Josh Hayes had his suspension working flawlessly through the twists and the turns of Laguna Seca. And here's Professor Russell with just how that was accomplished. Thank you, Paul. I'm back down here in the Yamaha pit with Jim Roach again. And this time we want to talk about suspension. Jim, walk us around that. Scott, what we have on the Yamaha R1 is a front suspension, which comes in the form of a fork. This is an outer tube. This is an inner tube and bottom bracket where the wheel mounts. What this fork does is absorb bumps as the bike goes around the track. Inside, there's a coil spring and oil that you can adjust how the fork works by adjusting preload or compression on the valving. On the other leg, the adjustment is a rebound, which slows or speeds up how fast the fork compresses and returns to its original position. In the rear of the bike, what we use is an Olin shock absorber. This is the outer mainspring and a pressurized chamber that the compression and the rebound is used just as it is in the fork to speed up or slow down how fast the shock compresses or returns to its original position. Well, that's so important to have that right so the rider can get the maximum lap time. Now, let's go over to Danielle Till. And Scott, equally as important as the setup of the motorcycles is the setup of the team. As you can see, this is a full factory effort down here in the KTM pits. Chris Fillmore and Taylor Knapp, both four motorcycles between the two of them. A lot of logistics goes into making one of these teams function so well. So let's go inside the KTM trailer and see exactly how it all goes down in there to keep this team running. We're going to go inside where not a lot of people get to go and check out all the spare parts that they have stored and what goes on inside the truck. As you can see, Uli to Porsche, crew chief for Chris Fillmore. They're inputting data into the computer with the data specialist. They put in all the information that comes in off the track, put it into the motorcycle to make them go faster. Over here, we have spare motors in case one of the riders blows a motor. They come in here, simple fix, right? Big motor, motorcycle makes it go back on the track faster. Over here, we have spare nuts, bolts, anything cosmetic that they may need if one of the riders has maybe a low side. Something easy, easy fix, drawer full of parts. And up here in the rider's lounge is where Chris Fillmore and Taylor Knapp hang out in their free time. And as you can see, Chris Fillmore carries his bicycle everywhere he goes. It's very fitness oriented, so you may catch him at any time at any track working on his health and fitness. Coming up, how to keep it on the ground with Scott. The sports bike season to date, can anyone challenge Cameron Bouvier in Utah this weekend? And he goes up the hill for the last time, but we are really witnessing someone quite special. As we showed you earlier, Steve Rapp's success in the Vance and Hines 1200 series and Josh Hayes' superbike dominance since Daytona are impressive. That's pretty tough to beat until you consider Yamaha's Cameron Bobier, who is in total control of the AMA Pro Sport Bike Series. He came into Daytona and simply dominated, leading 50 of 57 laps. End of story. He backed that win in Elkhart, taking control in the first lap of the first race. He goes up to the hill for victory here at Road America. It was a dominating day for Yamaha, which secured the first five finishing spots on the day. Jake Gagne fought back the next day and in big fashion over Cameron. Go oh, it! wow. Oh, whoa. Gagne, <laughs> he, 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 he ain't over yet. Oh, man. 
and through goes Gagne. The Yamahas again controlled the top five spots. That win by Gagne woke up Bobier. He won both barber races by at least five seconds. It wasn't even close. Here he comes. And that's a big smile from Oliver Hutchinson. And a wave to the team as he comes across the line. And yes, they've done it again. Bobier had his way in race one at Mid-Ohio and won easily. In race two, J.D. Beach on the 95 Yamaha pushed Cameron to the max. Dangerously close win for Bobier was his sixth of the year. Cameron Bobier comes out of the last corner and he's going to make it four in a row. What a season. What a rider this is turning out to be. Cameron Bobier wins again. At Laguna, Bovier lit up again for yet another win as Yamaha swept the podium. The points tell the story. Bovier is on a rampage and, in my opinion, the most dominant professional rider in the United States today. A lot of talent in this class, but this kid has the potential to be a world champion. And here's Professor Russell. Thank you, Paul. I'm back in the Yamaha pit with Jim Roach again. Jim, this time I want to talk about the motor. Show us around. What we got, Scott, is a Yamaha R1 cross-plane crankshaft engine. This is a one-liter engine, or 1,000 cc's. Pretty much the whole bottom, engine, bottom end of this engine is the same as the production motorcycle, in that we have to use a stock connecting rod, stock uh, crankshaft, and stock pistons. The cylinder head is something that we're allowed to play with because we can deck it, which is removing the material to increase, increase compression, or you can port the valves or do a valve job on, the, on it. This is a little bit of a secret spot that each team likes to spend a lot of time developing their engines around. Another thing we like to change out is the clutch. Yamaha uses the STM backport clutch so that corner entry is improved. The wheel spin continues rolling while he's entering the corner. One other item that we change out is the side cover on both sides of the engine. We use a grave side cover that is a little bit heavier material so that when the bike does was to crash on the asphalt, the asphalt won't grind through the cover dumping oil onto the racetrack. Well, these Graves guys are the best in the business at getting the most power out of these Yamaha R1 motors. Now let's go over and check with Danielle Till. Last time you heard from me, I was with the full factory KTM operation. The next step down is a privateer team. Mean Motorsports is one of these. Here, the riders hang out in the riders' lounge just like KTM. They even have a place to store all their gear and helmets. One of the differences is, though, team owner Amin Sajadi, he sleeps here while his riders sleep in a hotel. Even though this is a scaled down version of what you saw with KTM, don't be fooled that there's any less effort or a lack of results. They have two bikes per rider, just like KTM. There's just as much hard work going on over here in the pits. But in here, as you can see, not as many spare parts as the KTM team. What you see is what you get, and it's all out there. Let's send it back to Paul Page in Indianapolis. In the early days, that was about the size of Vance and Hines racing. But now, look at the NHRA trophies that they have amassed over the years. It's a spectacular testament to Terry Vance and Byron Hines, their hard work, their dedication, and their passion for the sport of motorcycle racing. We'll be back with more right after this. AMA Pro Racing Preview Show on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Get a free rate quote today. And by 1-800-MOTORCYCLE. The lawyers at 1-800-MOTORCYCLE remind you to ride safe tonight. 1-800-MOTORCYCLE. Lawyers helping injured riders. Call or click anytime for a free consultation. Welcome back to the GEICO Motorcycle AMA Pro Road Racing Pre-Race Show. While performance exhausts for both street and competition are being prepped by Vance and Hines technicians, our team of world champion Scott Russell and Danielle Teal are scouring the paddock for this week's GEICO Motorcycle Go-Round. Everyone you see in the AMA is a professional motorcycle racer. What some of you may not know is that some of them hold outside jobs outside of the paddock, full-time like Dustin Dominguez, number 68. Dustin, you have a really interesting job when you're not racing. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, you know, I'm a full-time aircraft mechanic at Tinker Air Force Base. Uh, get to work on airplanes and watch them fly around, so that's pretty cool. 
get a have to work a lot of overtime so I can take off to come to these races because uh, that's that's what I want my true uh, career to be. So we'll just see how it goes. Well, much like his teammate Dustin Dominguez, Corey West is one of the guys at this paddock that has to go home and work for a living to make his way back to the racetrack. Corey, tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, well, this year I got lucky enough to uh, get a job at EBR, Eric Buell Racing in Wisconsin, and uh, it's really awesome to be uh, in the industry and working on, on uh, race-related stuff. But um, until we can get some more big sponsors, you know, it's, it's kind of the deal where we've got to have a day-to-day -day job. But, you know, they're, they're really receptive to letting me go in and racing, and we'll just keep plugging away at it. Another rider juggling two jobs, a full-time job and racing motorcycles is Bobby Fong. Bobby, tell us about the juggling. When you go back home, is it back to reality? Yeah, it's definitely back to reality. I personally train back home as well as put up commercial doors. But uh, during the season, my uh, boss lets me take a lot of time off work. So mainly just personal training. But uh, I'll go back home and uh, do training for myself and also train other people as well. Finally, Joey Pascarella, another one of the riders in the sport who has to go home and have a real job during the week to get back here to do the things he loves to do. Joey, tell us about that. Uh, yeah, definitely. I uh, work at Cycle Gear, a nationwide motorcycle apparel and parts parts store. And, uh, you know, I sell tires, change tires, do a, sell apparel, leather suits. Uh, I do it all pretty much. And, um, you know, uh, at the end of a race weekend, I go home and work and uh, pay some bills. So, you know, it uh, it is what it is the way I look at it. And, you know, I still get to come back and Go racing and, you know, I got to work, you know. So there you have it. We're all heading for Salt Lake City for this weekend's Geico AMA Pro Action. Please make sure you join us. For Scott Russell, Danielle Teal, and our entire team, I'm Paul Page. This has been a presentation of Chet Burke's Productions with CBS Sports Network. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to CBSSports.com, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.